there is healing in the word. There is power in the word. There is deliverance in the word. Brethren, can I submit to you humbly? Humbly. It is good to wax eloquent, to speak. And so that people say, oh, he's a good speaker. Those things be nothing to God. What counts is this word preached in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's all counts. We have so many thousands of people going to churches like we are here today, listening to messages, and they go and come, and they go and come, and they go and come. What is wrong with us? There is something we are not doing. May I submit to you this day that we need to take our responsibility. Parents are given the awesome responsibility to instill into their children spirituality and morality. Two things, not more. I can break that down in any category. Spirituality and morality. Why? Because our society, especially America, is so deficient, it is so bankrupt that doctors have decided that when a man, a, a boy is born, a boy with boy parts from top to bottom, and the boy says, I feel I'm a woman. They go below their groins and change everything. When a young girl says that I feel I'm a boy, they do damage in the breast and below. These things are happening in this culture. These things are happening in this culture. And Christians say, well, it's okay. Let them do what they want to do. Brethren, the Bible says we are the salt of the earth. And we are the light of the We cannot take it. We cannot stand it. I have challenging news for us. Children are not the responsibility of the church. Did you hear that? Yes. They are not the responsibility of schools. They are not the responsibility of any governmental institution. No, 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 no. Children are the responsibility of parents in Jesus' name. We will show you from the Bible today how God breaks these three people working together. The father, the mother, and the children. Right from the Bible. So, contrary to what society teaches, contrary to what our culture teaches, we are going to be determined to raise champions for Christ. As a parent, I want to raise champions for Christ in a perverse, spiritually and morally bankrupt culture. That is your calling as parents. Not only here, but all over the world. If you believe in Christ, and you say you're a follower of Christ, you have no choice. It's a responsibility God has given you. Will you say amen? amen. And the first responsibility is one's faith. We need to instill in our children the solid foundation of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing else. That is the key. That is my responsibility as a parent. That's your responsibility as a parent. Because our culture is morally bankrupt. We need a solid faith foundation. The Bible says, we've each been given a measure of faith. It's in the Bible. Romans 12, 3. Each person. You cannot believe without faith. Faith is the core ingredient that we can say we believe. If you talk to people out there, you say, oh, my faith is in my denomination. My faith is in my... No, no, no. 
Your belief system is your faith. What you believe determines where you are going to. And so we have that core foundation. It will be wonderful. In fact, I'm going to ask the resident pastor for Wednesday to draw a plant. And that plant you will have as the root called faith. Because our faith is anchored in the love of God. Our faith is anchored in God. We put our trust in God. And then you have this term, which is the Holy Spirit. You have the branches, that is us. And then you have the fruit. So we're going to talk about 10 moral qualities that God has asked us to place in children. There may be more, but we'll deal with 10. Today we'll deal with four. Next time we'll deal with three. And we'll deal with the last three. So those of you who are out of town, you have to stay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Faith comes by hearing. and hearing cha-cha-cha. Hearing, hearing, hearing Malay, Marengi. The hearing the French language. The word of God. The word of God. I have... Mm, mm, mm. In the word of God. My Bible says. You may not even come to church. If you don't want to. Because it's your choice. But without faith. It is impossible to do what? Please God. Very clear. No if and no mamugu magu. No, no, no. The only way you make God happy. Is your trust and faith. In him. Praise the name of Jesus. My Bible says, the righteous walk by faith. So, where do you start? From beginning, you are given faith, and you walk by faith. There's, no, there's nothing, you, that's, that's all you've been given. That's all you have. And that's all you can dwell on. You see, if somebody could go to school and get faith, it would be one thing. If you could buy faith with money, it's another thing. But you and I cannot. It's a gift from God. Amen. Will you say amen with me? So let's read what the Bible says. I chose two verses because in this assembly, we have decided that we don't base our theology on one verse. Will you say amen with me? Amen. And so I encourage you to help me read. Can everybody read here? Oh, yes. Hebrews 10, 38 to 39. Let's read it lovingly and sweetly. Lovingly and? Go. And a righteous person will live by faith. But I will have no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn their backs on God and seal their faith. Remember we sang here this morning? Ruth let us, I've made, uh, I've, I've made my mind up. When you, when you become a Christian, the first thing you do is, you say, I've made my mind. No matter what happens, no matter what comes my way, I will stay focused on the one whom I want to see. That's right. That's right. When we go to school, we want to get degrees or get some training. You want to get to the end of the course, right? You cannot go and live halfway. No, 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 no. And the beauty is that God does not want to leave you walk that life alone. He is there to support you. That's why I gave you the name, my helper. My helper. My helper. my helper, there is nothing that makes me come into your presence, my helper. I'm going to make a statement later on. I can't even make it now. Brethren, I want you to imagine this. If I asked you to take your hand and sweep and mop this whole room, what would you think about me? You are crazy. Take my hand and mop, wipe. What? That's crazy. Totally crazy. Right? You may not say it, not to insult me, but in your heart, they say, oh, that's a crazy old man. You know, he's getting senile. So, can you ask me to do that? Now, let me make this statement. No one can live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit. It is impossible. 
If we ever think that we can do things without the Holy Spirit, the Bible is very clear. Even prayers, it says you don't know how to pray. You don't know what to pray. You don't know how to, how to pray, even what to pray. Listen, brethren, let's stop fighting ourselves. Let's stop struggling and sweating about the Christian life. The Christian life is total, total, absolute dependence on the Holy Spirit. Nothing more, nothing less. From prayers to everything you do. So, we've just read that God will not take pleasure for those who turn their backs. Amen? Amen. Can we continue with but? Go. But we are not like those who turn their backs on God and live their faith. What are we? We have faith that assures our salvation. Brethren, you cannot say you are saved without having the assurance of that faith. What is faith? Faith is saying, I trust you. Can people let you down? Have people let you down? Yes. You can't give them their total trust. Please. I'm sorry. The only person you can trust completely and absolutely is your God. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us buttress with the second verse from 2 Peter 1, 5, 8, which talks about building. Everything you have in the Christian life, every discipline is built on faith. Amen? Amen. Can we read the verse? Go. Enjoy it. Go. So, we make every effort. Second Peter 1, 5 to 8. Is it there? Boy, what? Okay, let me read for us. Amen? <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Can you listen then? Yes. Second Peter 1, 5, 8. Now, I want you to count for me in your heart what is added to faith. Amen? Amen. Maybe pastor could get the translation where it says add because I have a different version here. And get a mic, please. Get the version that says add. It's Second Peter 1, 5 to 8. Everything is built on faith. Faith is the fundamental, the core thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let me read NL, NLT version. But I want him or somebody else to help me. We are family here, amen. Feel free. Hallelujah. Relax. Relax, Max. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because faith is fundamental to everything in Christianity. Everything, my beloved. You will see it now. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 5 to 8. NLT. Can I enjoy it? Yeah. Go. So we make every effort. You see, faith demands my helping, attaching, yielding, supporting God's word. You have to take an, you have to take an, have an action. Remember Moses, right? When he was about to cross the Red Sea, he was talking about God. <laughs> look at the water. We are, we are in, in and between. Look at something. We, we cannot make it. God said what? Who remembers? What is that? What is that? Moses, you have to take part in this miracle. See, miracles come because we do our part. God has already done his. Most have already provided with the rod. What are you crying to me for? Stop crying like a small baby. Hallelujah. And when he took that rod, what did he do? Struck. What happened? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Moses started jumping. Ah, the sea has parted. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the children of Israel just came right through. Right? And God made it so, such a way that the Pharaoh army came with everything and God allowed them to also get right way. But the trick, if you read the Bible carefully, God put a blockade between the Egyptian soldiers and the Israelites. They crossed over and God allowed all the army of Pharaoh to get right into the sea. 
And he told Moses, do one more thing. Do what again? What's the one thing? Strike. And what happened? You see, God works in collaboration with us. If Moses had not done it, what would have happened? No, no, they would have killed his people and him. I remember a story again in the Bible where the prophet told the king to strike how many times? Many times, my brother. Thank you, many times. But he disturbed God by stop God by cutting three times. I said, if you had done it many times, would have seen great results. How many times do we hinder God's blessing because we don't cooperate? So, let's read the verse. Amen? Amen. So, we make every effort to apply the benefits of these promises to your life. Also my life. life. Then your faith then your what? No, your prayers. No, your evangelism. No, your prayers. Okay, I'm sorry. Then your faith will produce a life of moral excellence. Oh my God. What do you want to promote in your children? Moral excellence. Look at your children. Look at where they are. Even if they're not here they're, they're in colleges, just, just, just imagine them <laughs> and, and prophesy moral excellence. Prophesy moral excellence. Prophesy moral excellence. Moral excellence. Moral excellence. Hallelujah. Yes. That's what God has said you should do. And he will perform the, the thing. Amen. Amen. And a life of moral excellence leads to what? Knowing God better. <laughs> and knowing God leads to self-control. Self-control leads to patient endurance. And patient endurance leads to godliness. Who wants their children to be godly here? In a perverse and rotten generation. Godliness leads to love. Ah, the key thing, love. God is love for other Christians. And finally, you will grow to have love for, hey, when I have faith, I'll grow to have love for who? For everyone. The more you grow like this, the more you become productive and useful in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor, help us. Oh. Ooh, I just... yeah, here we go in the NIV version. Yes. It is written. Amen. Amen. It says, for this very reason. For this what? This very Please, reason. Said, for this what? Very reason. Thank you. I like when you talk like that. Make every effort to Make... add. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. All Do right. what? To add. No, no, no. You don't see where it is subtract. No, no, you add it. All right, all right. Sorry. You add to your faith. Add to what? Your faith. So what is the base? The faith. Faith, 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 the faith, 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 faith. Add to your faith goodness. Ha. And to goodness, knowledge. Ah. And to knowledge, self-control. Ah. And to self-control, perseverance. Ah. And to perseverance, godliness. Mm. And to godliness, mutual oh, affection. Yeah. And to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. To sum up, faith in God, not in a denomination, not in a human being, faith in God produces moral excellence. Can you raise up your right hand? For those of you who are parents, command moral excellence in your children right now. Let's do it right now. Father, we command moral excellence in our grown children. Moral excellence. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And this moral excellence will lead to know God better. Have self-control. Patient endurance. Godliness and love for Christians and everyone will become productive members of our society. Oh, for fuck God, why can't people not see this? Give us a revelation of the foundation of our belief Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let us, let us see how God distributes in Proverbs 6, 20 and 23. 
how God distributes the functions in a home where the father is the head, the mother is the neck. The mother is the what? The neck. Those who are married here, just look at the necks who are married. The men, look at the necks. Look at your neck. Look at your neck and enjoy your neck. Hallelujah. And the children are the rest of the other body parts. Hallelujah. Now, can you help me read this before we talk about it? Go. My son, keep your father's commands. Commands, right? Or commandments. And do not forsake your mother's teachings. Eh? For these commands are a lamb to your feet. I added that from another scripture. This teaching is a light to your path. And the corrections of discipline are the way of life. Hmm. How is God, God so sweet? Why do you make God's word so sweet like this? Hallelujah. Fathers have the responsibility, listen to this, to tell and instruct their children, tell and instruct them about the two most important commands. Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your might of strength. The second one is, love your neighbor as yourself. Have every father understood what they're supposed to tell their kids today? So when the Bible says, my son, keep your father's command, it's not the father, father. The father has received. The father was made head of that home. He has received from the Lord. He passed that on to the children. Now, because in those days, when the Bible was written, I want us to look at the Bible in its context. Women were usually at home. While the men went out to. And so if you have a, a young man who comes to you to marry you, if he has no plan, no agenda, no, um, no, no vision, don't marry. Correct. Don't. Marry. They must give you a clear vision of life. Because you are there as the neck. The neck cannot go over the head. The head has to tell the neck. Will you say amen with me? Amen. So because the home in which this Bible, the Bible passage was written, the women stayed at home. They were now supposed to teach the children. On Wednesdays, I would like mothers to come here. On Wednesday, so no go, no going out of town. Hallelujah. They will come here and tell us how they teach their children at home. Amen? Amen? So if the children eat like this, is it the father's fault? No. 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 It's, the, it's the mother's fault. When you're eating food, when you're eating fufu, cut the fufu like this, right? And swallow it like this. Don't swallow it like this. No. Swallow it like this. If you're drinking water, eh? you don't drink gong, gong, gong. No. You take your, the mother's duty. Now, please, let no one be condemned. If we learn things new, then we start practicing them. Will you say amen? amen? If we didn't know these things, please don't condemn yourself. The Bible is not a book to condemn. The Bible is a book to encourage us. If we're not doing the right thing, let's start doing the right thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the father will keep repeating the command of the Lord that he's given his children. And I like the last part. <laughs> the commands I light I'm sorry the commands I lamp to my feet and I light to my but then the last thing comes in and the corrections the head person to correct it doesn't mean mothers don't correct it is the father amen, amen. I don't want to say some things alright but just let's leave it like that. Eh? The father does the correction. The father does not do punishment. The father does the correction. When the mother has taught and said, look, this is how you eat. You have to go to bed at 8. Instead, you want to go to bed at 10. 
I've told you to come home here. This home is seven. You have to. It's time seven o'clock. They refuse. Say okay. Let their daddy come. Amen. Daddies are meant to be stools of order, not to kill, not to destroy. But when they come, say, "Hey boy, what do you say? Hey boy, sit up." Amen. We had a daughter. I won't say the name. When he said something to them, Dora will start crying. Dora will walk away quietly crying. So I scarcely, scarcely, because they will walk away. One will cry. Mm, I didn't like my daughter's crying. Oh, the occupy the position in my heart. You don't know. Not the boys, the boys. Don't forget about the boys. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And the other will go walk quietly into their room. Amen. And my wife is a strong woman. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to get a strong woman by you. I tell you, she's a benefit to me. Because sometimes I'm lobby lobby. Hallelujah. And then she'll come. Margaret Thatcher. Don't let her hear this. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, the man is responsible for discipline. But please, teach them. Don't be harsh to them. Because you don't want to alienate your children. There are many parents, uh, boys, who have been raised up and they and their fathers don't get along. Amen? Don't get along. Because they were overly harsh. Instead of correcting, they were punishing. Nowhere does the Bible say you should punish your children. It says discipline them. Go and look at those two words in the original Greek. Hallelujah. Can we continue? Let us get now to We've it taken apparatus all this time. Let us now look at the four things. That I told you I have ten of them. And people are out of town are going, no. Nowhere. Pastor, make sure you block all the airlines and everything. Hallelujah. Can we read this introduction together? Go. Parents must focus on building what? Godly character qualities in their children. Wait a minute. Is that all? How? With the help of the Holy Spirit. Brethren, can I say one more time what I said earlier? There is no way you can practice God's disciplines. No way you can practice living for God on your own. Listen to the word. You all understand the word impossible. It is, but he's there to help. That's why he's called a helper. But you know what we do? We all neglect him. We ignore him. And we do our own thing. And then when we hit our head against the wall, we say, Bob, oh, why is it not working for me? Why do you do this? It is you. It's not anybody. Invite him. He's there pleading. I'm here. Oh. Amen? Can you imagine a little child trying to carry a bucket? The father is there. And he's struggling. The father is there to say, I'm here to help. He said, no, daddy. He tries, he falls. He tries, he throws the water down. Ah, I am here to help you. There is help. Tell somebody, point someone say, there's help. Tell them there's help. The Holy Spirit. Let's not forget him. Amen? So, the key word here is model integrity. That's the first one. Model integrity. You've heard pastors said, many of you have said many times, things are caught more than when you teach those things. When you tell people to do something, no. Give you a scenario because we talk about integrity. They say, a Christian, Christian, he didn't want somebody to come and disturb his nap. So he told the son. When so and so person comes, eh? when they come to the house, tell them, I am not home. What moral value have I taught? Hey, don't shout it loud. So, you are teaching a child to tell a lie. Another mother, and I'm glad that I will not tell you their names, they wanted to invite their neighbors over, over for food. 
They said, oh, these people, they are poor people. They don't, they don't have, I mean, poor, poor, I mean, let them come and eat good food. The neighbors came in. It was time for dinner. And you know what the father did? He asked the daughter to pray for the meal. You know what children are like? Said, Lord, these neighbors, they don't have anything. They come and worry my mother here to cook. But so, Lord, have fun. Lord, were the parents embarrassed? Yeah. Integrity. You want to live model integrity so that they see that what you say and what you do matches. Let your word be a word. If you tell a child, I'm going to correct you, make sure you follow through with it. Amen? Amen. Don't say, I will correct you and then uh, the evening can you forget? Mm. They will say, ah, he will forget a. Yeah. Will you say amen with me? You are a truth teller. You, your manner of life is such that when your child sees, they will copy more than you tell them. I got two verses for you. Amen? About living, modeling a life of integrity. Can we read the verses together? Go. No. Speaking the truth with love, we will grow up in every way into Christ, who is the head. When I practice moral integrity, I'm becoming like Christ because he was a man of impeccable, perfect integrity. Will you say amen with me? Amen. Then Proverbs 22, 1, to buttress, the integrity part is, go. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver and gold. Men, you have a family name, right? The Angis. You know how we love God in this home. Don't go out there and spoil the name of the Angis. Will you say me? Say to me. Don't go and spoil the name of the Angis. How many of you know Caleb Ekane here? Caleb Ekane went to one high school. Remember it? Osborne. Right? And when he left, you know who went to the same school? Ruth. And what did Caleb tell Ruth? The cunning name in this place is Hell I. Don't come and mess the cunning name. Please read with me again Proverbs 22 and go. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver. And go. The next, discipline. Many people don't like discipline. If your children observe that you are a scattered man, your shoes are here, your pants are there, uh, the plates are unwashed. The, oh, what did they do? Oh, I have a very good dad. He's very disciplined. Huh? Oh, I have a very good mom. Sometimes you can also go to the extreme. Before I was married, I had a few shirts, but I knew where each color shirt is. That's extreme. And when I got married and the children came and they taught me pepe, you cannot always align things the way you want. You have to give some latitude. Will you say amen with me? Amen. Show them that delayed gratification it's a good model. Model discipline. Take away the Nintendo, if that's what I play a lot. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Even if the father's not around, the father calls from the buncha and says, you can only watch that thing for two hours, period. And if the mother discovers, calls back the father. So your rule is being broken. And fathers, you don't take it lying down. If you're in the same house and you allow them to watch something on television, amen, television time is so long, so much. They cannot exceed that. If they try, you put your phone on the ground. 
It cannot happen. You are instilling discipline in them. Will you say amen with me? Amen. Let them develop habits of setting goals. So many adults are in poverty today. Not because they don't make money. It is because they refuse to have a budget. Tell children from the beginning about budgeting. Give them $10. I'm pleading. I'm just, uh, I'm not imposing. Give each child $10. Tell them how they have to put that $10. Say, out of $10, give two in, in, in church on Sunday. Amen? The other eight, eat in school for the whole week. Are you listening? Yes. That is instilling discipline in the children. They will grow up and not regret. Amen. My wife and I have never had any, any outstanding debt. When it comes, we may charge our credit card. We always talk with our finances. Every day we talk, we look at this thing so that nobody messes up with our finances. Hallelujah. I go to my this thing about two or three times a day. My bank account. To make sure that uh, uh, somebody didn't come to take my money. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Somebody didn't come to take my money. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Instilling them discipline. But if you are not disciplined, they cannot be disciplined. You know where I start? When you are still a single man or a single woman. That's when you have a good, rich, sweet bank account. Yes. And they will follow. Hallelujah. Amen. I think uh, uh, somebody will pay for this sermon. His name is over there. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Let's read the verse about discipline. Go. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plan. It did not say reason from your head. Because when the Lord created you, he created with a plan and a purpose. Ask him and he will tell you how you should follow those instructions. Praise the Lord. And then Proverbs 19.18 says, many are the... Oh, 9.21. Thank you. Go. Many are the plans of a person's heart. Do we have plans in our hearts? Many. I have, I have a lot. Oh, what do you do? But it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Can we continue? We've talked about integrity. We've talked about discipline. Next one, quickly. Endurance. Oh, my God. Repeat after me. Quitters are always losers. So never, never, never give up. You are God-given goals. See, for a Christian, you never give up. If God says, this is what you want, stay there. A sister told us, yeah, she said it openly so I can say it. So they were with us in this church. <clears throat> when you go to university, it, you take four years. She went to a French system of the university in our country. She said, give testimony. Sister Naomi. And because it was so difficult, she was studying the subject in a foreign language. She wanted to have a degree. Who can guess how many years she took? Yes. Five. Very sweet girl. She took eight years to get a degree. How many years? Eight. Because she knew that God wanted her to get a degree. So it didn't matter how long it took. She persevered. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a famous American experience that said, hang in there when it gets tough. Say it again. Hang in there when it gets tough. No, but look at somebody and tell them, hang in there when it gets tough. Hang in there when it gets tough. Yes. Never, never, never give up. It should not be a vocabulary. A Christian should have, mm, never, mm, doesn't exist. Take it away. Will you say amen with me? Don't say, I depend on this is how I feel, then I quit. No, no, don't tell about feelings. Can we do the two, the two verses together? Romans 5, 4, go. An endurance develops strength of what? Strength of what? Strength of what? And what? And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Hebrews 12, 1 says, let us do what? Run with endurance the race 
God has set before us. Brethren, can I submit and suggest something to you guys? I like when people take notes. But can I make it simple for you? You have cell phones. You can be taking pictures. Thank you for doing it. Because we, look, I told people, I think it was on a Wednesday or so, the Air Force Academy did a study about retention. They said, you forget 98% of the things you are told after 72 hours. He remembers. For those of you who didn't hear this, you are now here in the whole world. The Air Force Academy in America, one of the finest institutions, because pilots have to be very precise. They said when you hear things, you can keep them for 72 hours. But after that, you only retain what? 2%. So it is good to take notes. And if you are lazy to take notes, chuk, chuk. Hallelujah. All say chick. Mm -hmm. All right. Let us run with endurance. We get to the final one. Hallelujah. And you happy the service is over? Four. Come next week, three. PR, don't allow these people to come from out of town to leave, please. All right. Now, the last one, generosity. Who is generous? Who do you know who is generous? God is the most generous person. Tell me what you have that you did not receive. One thing. I'm waiting for hands to be up now. Yango bingo. The question is, what have you received that you did not, what do you have that you did not receive? Right? Anybody with a hand up? I'm waiting for hands, please. My hand is down myself. God is the most generous, the most benevolent person. He gave you life. He gave you parents. He gave you a brain. Everything you have is given. And forget about this fake psychologists and scientists who want to tell you that life just happened. Boom. Big bang theory. You know, it means nothing. Hallelujah. Nonsense. Those of you who are going to school, stand up to them. You create something. And when they want to go and touch something, you know, there was a little story here. Somebody wanted to prove that man can create. Amen? Yeah. And the other person had wisdom. He said, you want to create? He said, go ahead. He said, I'll take you to the laboratory. He went to the lab and took oxygen. The guy said, stop, stop, stop. Did you create oxygen? He said, stop. He said, okay, I want to make this. You see how foolish these people are? Mankind with foolishness, I can create. Create what? They say, let me take this. Hey, did you create that soil? You got a piece of wood. Hey, did you create the tree that brought that piece of wood? God is the most generous, the most benevolent person, you know. And He loves you so much. That he didn't only make you into his image, he brought you into his family. Amen. That needs a shout. Amen. So, let me give you briefly, and on Wednesday I'll get into this. Many people, are, they have a, a wrong mindset, thinking that when you're generous, you're only generous with money. It's only one aspect of your generosity. Just one. Even that aspect, again, many people are not, but that's okay. Some people are. Amen? Amen. We balance it up. Some, some, but we leave it at that. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you a few ways. And on Wednesday, we'll, 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 we'll delve into this. We'll really enjoy how you can be generous to imitate your heavenly father. How do you value people? How do you add value to people's lives? You add value to people's lives when you compliment them when they do something. Amen? Amen. Oh, I like my sweet daughter's hair. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, she looks like gold. Hallelujah. Amen. Gold. Pure gold. And don't be jealous. Hallelujah. Pure gold. Praise the name of Jesus. 
You are adding value. You see what we are? Because of our human uh, sinful nature, we do more of saying things that discourage people. Things that put people down. Instead of adding value to their lives. Can we start complimenting people? Can, please, this is practical. If we all left here and said, today I'm going to compliment somebody. Right? Amen. You know how many, how many people will be happy with us? Yes. You know what I do? Pastor, do I have time to continue? Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay. When I go to the park and I see a young man, black young man, with a kid, a young kid, and they go together. You know what I do? I stop running, I go towards them. I said, sir. They say, yes. I said, I want to compliment you. Because not many parents have a playtime with their kid. You know what happens? He smiles hard. He had to eat. He's been coming. He feels good. I said, keep up the good job. And I keep joking. If we made a promise to ourselves that this sermon will affect us by complimenting people, by affirming people, my God will change the world. Do we want to do that? Yes. Beginning from Remy. Hallelujah. Let's start. So, when we compliment people, when we have our time, our treasure, our talents, and we don't give people the leftovers, we give them what really hurts us. Give your prime time, your best of time to people. Give your best of talent to people. When pastor, for instance, does this uh, first, um, my son um, Francis does them, pastor now mod modifies them. You see how presentable they are? Yeah. I could, he sometimes adds pictures. Have you seen that? Those, I just write rough things. He fixes it and he polishes it. And when I look, I say, oh, I wish I had this. That's why my notes are not the same like the ones on top there. Please do something. Amen? Before we read the verses, I have four little stories to tell you. Four. I will not call the names. I know a lady during this Thanksgiving season. You know what the lady did? The lady went and bought, uh, don't call the name now, went and bought fish and bought plantains and brought the son with her and went and was distributing. That lady is in a church somewhere. Hallelujah. It's in a church where? Somewhere. somewhere. Not somewhere. Somewhere. What was she teaching the son? Let's not make Bible difficult. Ah. I know a young man somewhere who is also a man of God. Hallelujah. He said, beginning this December, all the things that would have been bought for the kids will be bought for other kids. What is he instilling in the children? It is more blessed. Please, let's not make this gospel complicated. Amen? Amen? Two last stories. How many of you know of Spellman College? Spellman, here. A commencement speaker whose name I will not call. During his, the commencement ceremony of a graduating class, he told them the first thing was said was, I brought good news for you. You know what he said? All of your debt is paid. He said, as you stand in these grounds, you're going back home. No debt. Can you instill your children that one of them will do that? I know a young man somewhere wants to go to a, a country where his parents come from and he wants to do great things. Generosity. There is another school, the last story, before I read the, the, the notes. Nodesha, which is in Kansas City. A couple, a couple decided to do something. A what? They went to a high school graduating class. You know the number of students? There were 300. And they announced that these children will be given scholarship for the next 25 years. Wow. For the next what? 25 years. 
go to Google New Odisha, Kansas High School. You see it there. The graduating class from high school. You see, if you do something like they did in Spell, Spell, Spellman, a few days, but this is a guy who says for 25 years. So the scholarship will go with that children for 25 years, whatever school they want to go to. They throw it of them. I wish I was still born and then I was there in that school. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we read the two verses of generosity and then I'll ask our pastor to come and lead us in the prayer and close us out. Amen. Amen. Can we stand and then read these two verses together? Thank you for bearing with me. Thank you that we are going to be different from today. Amen. Amen. What, is, what does Isaiah 2, 8 say? Go. But good people will be generous to others and will be blessed for all they do. Who are the good people? Christians, not people in the world. Christians. What does Corinthians say? 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Go. And God... Is it there? 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Okay. Let me read. Thank you. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need. And plenty left over to share with others. When God sees that you have a generous spirit, he will just load you. And load you. We think with our mindset that if I'm stingy, right, I'll be helped. Brethren, I beg you, don't be angry. People are supposed to contribute $100 each in this church, one every month, towards the building fund. Not many have done it. People believe that they can give $50 in this church, $100 a whole month. They forget the missionaries. They forget this house. They forget my salary. $100 or $50, that's it. Can I beg? Would you start to be generous? Am I saying something wrong? No. You are here. You do it. Please, I beg. Let's be generous. Let's not talk Christianity where. Do it. Pastor. Would you read, would you read all of it? One more. Second Corinthians 9.9. 9. They shall freely give. How? To the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered. Only one day. 